Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 10, building an app, Color Sleuth, number 11. Updating the UI to indicate whose turn it is. A choice has been made for you in the design of the app to indicate whose turn it is in the UI. Notice in the design that there are two gray rectangles behind the player score with IDs, player one highlight and player two highlight. Player two highlight starts out hidden. We have a do this, Add code to the if statement and switch player. Use the hide element and show element commands found in the UI control toolbox to show and hide these rectangles as a way of indicating whose turn it is. For example, if it's player one's turn, then show player one highlight and hide player two highlight. When you're done, you should see the player highlight alternate like the graphic above. We have a tip. Make the player two highlight start out hidden by checking the hidden box for it in design mode. Looking at our example right here, you can see it switches back between player one and player two to indicate whose turn it is. Much more helpful than down here in my debug console. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have to do here. Well, the first thing I want to do is I really want to make this player two highlighted when it's done. And let's take a look in our design mode here. This player one player two highlight is this box right here. Notice you can only see part of the name, but if we come down here, it shows it. If we come over here to player two highlight, you will see it is actually already hidden from the start. So we actually don't need to do that. They did that tip for us. In the future though, if you want to hide something at the beginning, that's a good place to start right there. Ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to make this gray box highlight depending on whose turn it is. Well, how do we do that? Let's go to our code. It says here we have to update the if statement within switch player. So let's go find our switch player command. And this is it right here. This is our work from the last lesson. I'm gonna assume what we're gonna do is have different if and else statements there. So if something is happening, I wanna hide and show something, or else I wanna hide and show something completely different. If I just hit uh, return to give myself a line, You'll notice in my UI controls, I actually have a show element and hide element part right there. I'm just gonna type this in though. We're gonna do hide element first. What hide element are we gonna do? Well, that's all the way back to our design, this player one highlight. So on my show element, I want player one highlight. We're gonna do the same thing for the second one. We're going to do a hide element. And in this one, it is going to be a player two highlight. Oops, a little much there. Now I'm getting an error here. Look what happens though when I put this in quotes. Don't forget your parentheses there. Put our quote over here. And look, our little yellow triangle goes away. Common mistake I see here is students forgetting their quotations. Don't forget to change this since we uh, copied and pasted it. So if current one player is number one, we wanna highlight player one. So we show the gray box and hide it in player two. We're gonna do exactly the same thing in our else statement, but reverse it. So it will be show player two, hide player one. Tab this over so it's all in line. This should move my gray box around depending on whose turn it is. Let's go ahead and test this code out. Hit run, we're on player one, click it. We switch over to player two. Player one, player two. Looks like our boxes are switching pretty good and it's still outputting to our console.log. That is pretty much all we had to do for this lesson. Looking back up here, 
We added code to the if statement and switch player. We use the hide element and show element commands in the toolbox. And when one player's turn, they're highlighted and then it switches to the next player when they are done and just goes back and forth. And our graphic more importantly does exactly like the example. I think that's all code.org wanted. Let's see if they want anything else. They, good job kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.